What's up guys? Welcome to today's vlog. So on the vlog today, I've got something that all of you guys really like, which is a live model. Her name is Mary, she came in, she wanted a asymmetrical pixie cut, which was a big change for Mary. So as you can see, this is what she came in with before, and this is what she has now after. So I'm really excited to show you guys how we got there, show you guys the journey. Also, we use tons of different techniques in this video, so I think it, even if you don't wanna do this specific haircut, there's gonna be things that you can take away from it. Also, we use multiple tools. We use Mizutani scissors, we use uh, the Donald Scott carving comb, we use all kinds of different tricks to create this look. So I hope you guys liked the video. Let me know in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that already. And here we go. All right, guys, so an exciting video today. Check out the before. So a couple things I want you to notice real quick is the disconnections that are kind of hanging over. They're very few. So I think that has a lot to do with the sectioning and the preparation of her last cut wherever she got it. Um, so you want to make sure that anytime you're sectioning off a haircut, it has a purpose um, and you're really following that head shape or you're going to end up with disconnections that don't make sense. Uh, the thing that I put in to prep the hair, that's Invisible Wear Memory Shaper. It's a, like a medium hold gel. This is a brand new product from Paul Mitchell. And the thing I like most about it, it's got a nice slip to it, a uh, nice medium hold, and it's great as a cutting lotion. And it's really great on fine hair, creating a lot of shine. So sectioning is pretty simple. I go on the left-hand side of her head, and then I follow that back to about mid-crown. And then I do a diagonal back parting uh, just to create kind of a V shape. And then I take that point down to a little bit lower, on the right hand side because we're going to create more of a disconnected asymmetrical feel on that side of the head so um so we clip that away all right and then as we move forward so this is where we're going to start the haircut um, i'm working diagonal back because i want to work with the round of the head now the key thing i want you guys to see in this part of the haircut is my finger angle um, it comes out just a little bit so you can see where i'm kind of pointing it out it gets a little bit longer towards the inside of my finger what that's going to do is help work with the head shape so mary's head is a little bit flatter on the side so i wanted to kind of create that shape um, to give it more of a square feel on the side as opposed to rounding it off then her haircut would wouldn't really look right so I'm really focused on making sure that I'm not rounding her head too much uh, in this short portion of the haircut now I continue taking half inch partings all the way back following the round of the head and then just scooping up a little bit of that old hair as my guide but coming straight off of the head so straight out from the head not building up weight the only part that's building up weight is that top part right around the parietal ridge area where her head starts to round off that's where we're going to build up a little bit of a weight line to balance her head shape so you can see i'm working palm to palm um, keeping everything nice and clean that uh, the memory shaper, the invisible wear memory shaper is really what kind of helps hold the hair as I'm parting through it. Um, it's another benefit of using a product in the hair. Also, the reason I like using a product in the hair before as I'm cutting is because I'm working that product through every bit of her hair as I go. And then when I go to blow it dry at the end, every bit of her hair has product saturated on it. So again, continuing following the head shape, half inch parting, um, things that I like to think about when I'm in this point of the haircut is just elevation. Elevation becomes more difficult as you work up the head shape because my elbow is starting to lift up in the air. And as my elbow lifts up in the air, um, the challenge is you're naturally going to want to drop your elbow down. So naturally, um, you would make a heavier shape happen without even doing it on purpose. So just make sure that you keep that elevation up. Um, when you're trying to remove weight on the head shape. So you can see straight out from the head, still working diagonal back, continuing it back into the bottom nape area. The other thing I want you guys to notice is I'm keeping it fringier looking at the bottom around the nape area because I really personally like that more lived in look with these type of shapes. So I wanted to leave a little bit of length so as i elevate it up it pushes that weight down to her hairline so i get those like fringier uh, feeling pieces we're going to go in later with the razor and the scissor and kind of fine tune that so see my elevation was lifted up in that section and then when i move to this section um, the elevation drops a little bit i'm following the head shape still putting that weight line in the top but making sure that i'm not 
um, lowering my elevation too much and building up too much weight um, because I want that weight line to sit right below the parietal ridge, which you guys will notice it in a bit. So now what I want to do is notice how round Mary's, the back of Mary's head is. So I want to build up a shape towards the crown area and then tuck it in right at the occipital bone down into the nape. Give it more of a natural look to it. So that's the great thing about haircutting is that you can push weight throughout the head shape to give it the appearance. Like we're always doing different things within fashion and style to create certain looks and to kind of showcase different features. Well, this is how we can build features onto the head shape. So now my over direction is gonna come directly over that. Now I'm working with a stationary guide, keeping my finger angle uh, the same so that I'm building up the weight, but I'm also pushing more weight behind the right ear. And what that's gonna do for me is start to um, create that asymmetrical feel in the haircut. So you can see I'm combing everything over to that stationary guide and cutting it there. I've talked about this in a lot of videos in the past. A lot of times I'm pushing weight to cut later. So we are gonna go back through that with a razor and fine tune it, and we're gonna do some slide cutting techniques in it as well. So we are pushing a lot of weight there, but we're just doing a fundamental haircut right now to create, push the weight, and then we'll get creative with it in the dry cut. So now everything's gonna come back to a stationary guide as well. So I'm working diagonal forward now and just over directing everything straight back, creating that sort of A-line feel on the right-hand side. Mary was very particular in the consultation that she wanted to leave as much length as possible on the right-hand side. But as hairdressers, we have to decide, well, if we're gonna leave that much length, how do we make it still look right? Um, so what I did was I over direct everything back, create the A-line, then I go through and kind of like go just going back over that section and elevating it nice and high creating concave layers so that that side's more layered and not super heavy and it's still going to have that textured feel to it now i'm going to work horizontally across the top or you could call it vertical i still don't know exactly uh everybody says it differently so just straight across the top over directing everything back to a stationary guide so that guideline is coming straight back right over mid crown. And what that's gonna do is push extra length to the front, but give me that kind of connection that I need between the short part of her haircut and the long part. So we're creating a lot of short layers on top right now, but they will get much longer as we work our way up the, the head shape. So you can see I'm just cutting straight across. What that's doing is collapsing the top um, and building up weight towards the front. So my goal is not to uh, round this shape at all because I still want to have those weight lines in there. So everything is straight. My fingers are flat with the top of the head. So now you can see as I brush it out, you can see how it falls forward, but we've created a lot of layers, tons of movement that you'll see once we get it in the dry portion. So now I got the Donald Scott carving comb. This is another really cool tool available on free salon education. Um, I'm using the 50% carve side to work the nape of the neck. What that's doing is taking out 50% of the hair um, and leaving the other 50% on the head. So it gives texture. It's a good way to collapse a shape a little bit if you would like to. And this is helping me tuck her hair down into the nape. So I'm leaving that bulk on the top and tucking it down and also creating that kind of fun hairline where it starts a little shorter in the middle and gets a little longer towards the outside. Now I'm going through uh, using my Ergo paddle brush. This is actually the Ergo diamond head paddle brush. Um, so it's a miniature size paddle brush, which I really love for short hair. Um, if you want to check out more details, go to freesaloneducation.com for that. But I'm just working my way through the head shape, leafing the hair up, creating a little bit of volume, and then I go through with my palmitral neuro iron to smooth it out. So I'm smoothing everything uh, on a diagonal. What I want to do is work with the head shape so I'm not trying to fight anything and I'm creating uh, no part in the top of the head. That's really key when you're gonna go in and do some dry cutting is to make sure that you're not blow drying a part, a hard part into the hair. So now this is the Mizutani Puffin Scissor. It's a dry cutting scissor. I'm going through the back portion of the head and this is just where I pushed all that weight. So what I like to do is go through 
and do a bit of slide cutting with the puffin. Um, the reason it's a dry cutting scissor, you can see how fat the blades are. They have a ton of power to cut into dry hair. Also, um, the Mizutani Type K scissor that I was using for the precision cut at the beginning, I love that for my precision cuts, but I don't want to use it on dry hair, not because it won't cut it, but because it will dull the scissor. So you use a dry cutting scissor to go in and actually uh, do that power cutting, work with the dry hair, the blade is created for it so it doesn't ruin your precision scissor. So same thing here, after I did a little point cutting, I go through, do a little slide cutting, uh, just to add a little bit more to that fringe area around the hairline, a little point cutting around the edges, just to clean it up, but still keep it lived in, which is what I really like. Um, now I'm gonna do the same thing with the puffin right here to tie in the front and the back. Now the last technique that I'm gonna do, you guys have seen this before quite a bit, it's the tease cutting technique. If this is the first time you've watched one of these videos, um, I have tons of videos on this uh, slide cutting technique or the, the tease cutting technique. But what I'm doing is I'm just twisting the hair towards myself and then I do a half open, half close tease motion as I cut the hair. So I'm half closing in, removing the weight from the hair and creating a nice line, which turns into a really cool, almost like face frame or side bang. So the last thing that I'm gonna do is some more point cutting. So I take those same uh, partings across the top of the head and just do a deep point cut to remove weight and also create some texture. You can see how bold those lines are on the top. So I just wanna cut into them, soften them just a little bit. And the last thing I'm gonna use, this is Paul Mitchell Spray Wax. It's got a flexible texture hold to it. I really love this product. It's one of my favorites. Like if I was stranded on an island, this would be the product I would choose. Um, it gives a ton of texture. It's got a nice hold. It's really soft when you use a flat iron with it. Um, so I just love it. And you can see all the bold texture that came out of this cut, how it tucks into the nape. Um, you can see the asymmetrical feel throughout the back, pushing to the right side. And then the nice soft feeling of those round layers that we created in the front. And you can see how it builds that weight up, keeps her head from being super round looking, um, uh, using that shape to kind of square it off. So hope you guys liked the video. Let me know in the comments below. All right, guys, like always, I hope you liked the video. If you did like this video, then make sure you hit the like button below. Also, subscribe to the channel by hitting the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on the multiple videos that I'm posting every single week. If you guys have any haircutting requests, post them in the comments below as well. I love getting your ideas. And don't forget, you can go to freesaloneducation.com, pick up Mizutani scissors, Donald Scott carving comb, the combs, the clips, everything that you see in this video for the most part, you can purchase on freesaloneducation.com. Thank you guys so much for the support. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.